my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. We'll begin with problem number 31. Today is our fifth video in the series. In the first four videos, we did problems 1 through 30. Number 31, the problem is already on the blackboard, as you can see. We are told that W workers can do a job in one week. The question simply is, how long will it take for one worker to do the same job working all by himself? Let's see what we can do. So we know we are told that W can do it, can do in one week. How long for one? How long will one take? One can do job in how many weeks? If it gives you trouble, if it gives you trouble to see it right away, the answer, the answer should be quite straightforward and simple, but if it gives you trouble, and not just this time, as always, if any algebra problem gives you trouble, as I've been telling you throughout the last four videos, problem number 1 through 30, one thing that we learned over and over again is that anytime an algebra problem gives you prob uh, trouble, convert it into an arithmetic problem. Immediately convert that algebraic problem that is giving you trouble into an arithmetic problem. How? By replacing the variables with numbers, by substituting numbers for the variables. For example, here, what if we are told that two workers, two workers can do job in one week. Two workers can do a job in one week. In that, if that's the case, if two workers take one week, are you able to see that, that in that case, one worker should take twice as long? One worker should take twice as long, two weeks. Similarly, if we are told that three workers can do something in one week, then if you only put one worker on the job, he will take three times as long. If you have, if five workers take the, five workers can do the job in one week, and you put one worker on the job, he will take five times as long. If fifteen workers can do a job in one week, one worker will take fifteen weeks. That's it. We are done. Instead of 15, we have W. If W worker can do it in one week, one worker will take W week. That's all. That's it. That's the end of the problem. Let's go to 32. Problem number 32. In problem number 32, we are told that Z squared plus 5Z candies Z squared plus 5Z candies are to be divided are to be divided equally among the people. How many does one person get? Z squared plus 5z candies, that's how many candies we have. We have to divide these candies among z people equally. How many does one person get? In other words, all that is being asked here, all that is being asked here is for us to take this quantity, this quantity that is given to us, z squared plus 5z. We have to take this quantity and divide it by the number of people, which is z. The question is, what do we do next? What we do next is, we need to distribute the denominator among the two terms in the numerator. And the first term in the numerator is z squared, so we have to divide z squared by z plus the second term we have is 5z, we need to divide 5z by z. And when we do that, we'll find that z squared divided by z is just z. z squared is divided by z is just becomes z because it's z times z and z goes away. Here, 5z divided by z, z cancels out, and that's it, we are done. The answer is z plus 5. The answer is each person is going to get z plus 5 candies. That's our answer. Now, how do we know? How do we know whether or not this answer is correct? How do we verify our answer? That's also very simple. We learned it in the first four videos. Again, by plugging in numbers in the entire problems. Just plug in any number you like, anything at all. Just don't plug in 0. Don't plug in 1, because those are not nice numbers to plug in, and of course, obviously, you're not going to plug in negative numbers. Very difficult to distribute negative numbers of candy, candies. Don't plug in 0, don't plug in 1. Plug in 2, 3, 5, whatever you like. I'm going to plug in 3 for whatever, the, for whatever it's worth. Let's pretend that we have 3 people. 
if z is equal to 3, how many candies do we have? We have z squared plus 5z, the z squared would be 9 plus 5 times 3 would be 15, we'll have 24 candies altogether. 24 candies are to be divided among 3 people, that's what the quantity is. The quantity that was given to us was z squared plus 5z, which works out to be 3 squared, which is 9, plus 5 times 3, which is 15, altogether 24 candies are to be divided among 3 people. Obviously, each person will end up having 8 candies. Is that what our answer says of, tells us? Our answer is right here. If you replace the z by 3, you get 3 plus 5, 8. 24 divided by 3 is 8. This answer is correct. Let's go on to the next one. Number 33. Number 33. The question is, what's the price of What's the price of 60 candies if a dozen cost X dollars? If a dozen cost X dollars. Now these questions are called easy algebra problem for a reason. These are very simple, very straightforward, very easy problems because we have 60 candies. Well, 60 candies that we have is simply 5 times 12. In other words, we have five dozen. We are told that one dozen, one dozen we are told, cost X dollars. Well, if one dozen cost X dollars, then that implies, that implies that five dozen should cost five times as much. There you go, five times X dollars. Why five times as much? Because if one dozen cost X dollars, five dozen, which is 60, five dozen should cost five times as much or five X dollars. The answer is five X dollars. Let's move on to the next one, number 34. Number 34. Michael pays. Michael pays. P percent of his income. In taxes. That's how much he pays, P percent in taxes. The question is, how much will he pay in taxes on an income of 57,400? How much will he pay in taxes on the income of 57,400 and no, the answer is not, depends on how clever his accountant is, do you understand? He's going to pay the taxes that are due properly. And he's required to pay P percent. Let's work on that. So we know he pays P percent. Pays P percent. What does it imply? If you pay 3% taxes, if P happens to be 3, 3% taxes means you pay $3 on every $100. If it's 10%, you would pay $10 on every $100. If it's 50, if it's 15%, if you pay 15% in taxes, you pay $15 on every $100. P percent implies that he pays, he pays P dollars on every $100 of income. His income is right here, 57,400. His income is 57,400 and we know he pays P dollars on every 100. How many hundred is that? Well, that's very simple. 57,400 is simply five, 574 times 100. That's how much his income is. On every $100, he pays P dollars so if he has $200 of income, he'll pay 2P dollars. If he has $700 of income, he'll pay 7P dollars. He has $574,000. That's how much his income is. His taxes would be, his taxes would simply be 574 times P dollars. That's how much he will pay in taxes, 574P. Whatever the value of the P happens to be. Let's do the next one, number 35. 
if his tax if his rate of tax happens to be three percent, then he will end up paying five hundred seventy-four times three. If if his rate of if his income tax rate happens to be seventeen percent, his total taxes that are going to be due is going to be seventeen times five hundred seventy-four, and so on and so forth. Let's do the next one. Number thirty-five. We are told that three sweaters, three sweaters cost three dollars. How much would five cost? If three sweaters cost D dollars, how many will five cost? Let's do it on the top. We are told the three cost D dollars. If three cost D dollars, that implies that one must cost. One must cause this amount D divided by three, a third of the amount. If one cause D over three, we are buying five of them. That in turn implies that five must cause D over three times five dollars. You can leave it like this, or you can make it a little bit look look pretty, or you can make it look a little bit more pretty by writing writing this amount as instead of writing D over three times five, it is proper is is more elegant to write this as five P over three. Done. And that's your answer. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.